Hello, and welcome to a video where I will be discussing the story from the latest game from Chiller's Art called The Closing Shift. This is a game where you play as a young woman who works the late shift in a coffee shop aptly named Chiller's Coffee. All seems normal until stuff starts happening which is not normal. It's a pretty creepy experience. With that being said, let's jump into the video. A young woman is getting ready for work but realises that she needs to hurry as she is going to be late. On the way to her car, she finds a phone on the floor by her apartment complex and deduces that someone may have dropped it. Making her way to her car, she spots a man seemingly searching for something and after speaking to him, it seems the phone belongs to him. Strangely, the man just stands there looking at her, but the woman gets into her car and drives to work. After arriving at work, she speaks to her senpai, or rather her colleague, who scolds her for being late. Again, it seems like this is a regular occurrence. The shift starts off like any other as the young woman makes drinks for customers. Eventually, after making lots of drinks and serving a lot of food, a private investigator named Hasaku comes into the coffee shop and asks the young woman if she's seen anything suspicious around the area lately. This resonates with something another customer told her earlier about stalker cases being on the rise. He mentions that there have been numerous reports of people getting harassed in the area, but he asks the woman to call him if she sees anything suspicious. Anyway, her shift ends and she has to clean up and starts by sweeping the floor, but when she finishes, the lights go out. She goes to the breaker and flips it back on. Also, there seem to be milk cartons strewn around the storeroom. She puts them back and finishes her shift. As before, the young woman arrives at the coffee shop to start another shift, but she's late again. She gets to work and a customer comes in and to her abject horror, he says that there's a strange man out there, but as he turns around, there's no one there anymore. This man comes in and bizarrely orders a coffee and two cups of just milk. Another man comes in and asks for her number, to which the woman either directly refuses or changes the subject. He continues being creepy and eventually he tells her that she'll regret rejecting him and then he leaves. After taking out the trash and getting ready to bust the tables at the end of her shift, she finds a photo of herself on the table. Her shift then ends. As she's leaving for work again, it seems that she's being watched. But anyway, the woman arrives for work, and it's the young woman's first closing shift. Interestingly, a group of girls come into the coffee shop, and after sitting down to drink and eat, they discuss a creepy guy on the bus. But then they mention another creepy guy, the guy outside. The woman then spots a creepy guy standing in the drive through Likely the very same creepy guy the girls were talking about. She goes out to confront the guy, but he's vanished. Something catches her eye. Attached to the drive through menu board is a note. Things just got real. It seems this young woman has a stalker. Now this stalker seemingly met her at Chiller's. Very creepy. She finishes her shift and goes home. Just before leaving for work again, the young woman receives a letter through the door. It's from her stalker. He mentions that the young woman had given him his phone, and she remembers that she gave a man a phone she found. She has met this stalker before. She leaves her work, it's snowing heavily, and her car is broken down, forcing her to take the bus to work. A creepy man turns around and looks at her, but nothing happens, and the young woman gets off the bus and arrives at work. When the bus leaves, she sees a man in the back of the bus, standing up and staring at her. It seems like the creepy guy on the bus wasn't actually looking at her. He was likely looking at the weird guy behind her. Nevertheless, she goes to work and after interrupting her senpai in the toilet, she starts her shift. There's a very tall man in the shop who just sits at a table and stares at her, only moving and leaving when a lady enters the store. This lady gives her a rosary bracelet, supposedly it'll protect her from evil. After serving another customer, the young woman experiences something strange. The store goes dark and a sort of countdown clock appears outside with an endless stream of customers. After the clock hits zero, she goes into the storeroom and is approached and attacked by someone, and then wakes up. It was all a nightmare. During her shift on the 17th of December, the private investigator arrives at the store after being called by the young woman. After mentioning that the police just seem to brush these things off, he goes to have a look around and see if he can find anything suspicious. Whilst he's looking around, a customer asks the young woman if they are fixing the antenna on the roof, as she saw someone up there. Suspicious and slightly concerned, the young woman goes down to look and there's no one there. However, an access point on the roof is open, which leads down into the locked storeroom. What she finds shocks her. A mattress and photos of her on the wall. She panics and quickly tries to close the store, but as she is flipping the close sign, the stalker appears. It seems that he's now making his move. 
Frantically trying to escape and with her things gone from her locker, the young woman assesses her options. She can either try to use a screwdriver to undo the vent in the bathroom, escaping to her car and driving home. If she tries this, the stalker ends up in the back of her car. Or she can go outside and try to escape, but the stalker attacks her. Or she can go up to the roof. If she goes up to the roof, she sees the private investigator dead, killed by the stalker, and she ends up dropping a cinder block onto the stalker's head and knocks him out. Thinking she's killed him, she calls the police and they investigate the scene, but the man is gone. Now resting at home, the young woman is watching TV when the signal goes funny. She tries to call her landlord, but her phone is gone. Strangely, she hears it ringing outside, so goes to get it, but on her return when calling the landlord, the cupboard slowly opens and the stalker is inside and attacks her, and the game then ends. So a couple of theories I had during this game. So our protagonist, this young woman, though we don't know her name, seems to be a student. Now the first theory, my guess is that she's a law student, given that when she encounters a customer who is under the influence of something and is dancing topless in the store, she can quote Penal Code Article 174 to get him to stop. This, coupled with her working night shifts, tells me that she may be a student. The second theory is regarding the senpai, or rather her colleague. Now this is just a wild theory and there are a few plot holes in this one, so remember it's just a theory, but a few things stuck out to me regarding her colleague. Firstly, he's quite mean to her at times, and in one point in particular, he laughs at her for claiming that she is being stalked. Is he trying to deflect or calm her suspicion by framing it as something ridiculous? We see him leave and drive off, but does he come back while she is at work? Also, the first stalker note mentions that they met at Chillers. Was this on her first day at work, maybe? We find a screwdriver in the locked storeroom where the stalker has been sleeping, and at one point, we find her colleague in the toilet. Could it be that he's just come back in via the vent in the toilet? Is he sneaking out during his shift to watch her? We also find coffees in the back storeroom. Seems like this guy knows how to use the equipment to make coffee. And then again, he could just be drinking milk. This guy also always wears a mask, whilst literally no one else does. Is this because he doesn't want her to recognize him? Remember, it's likely that these two don't work together all the time. The shifts in the game are spaced days apart. I mean, this is just a loose theory and likely isn't plausible because at one point on the shift where the nightmare takes place, when getting the bus, the young woman sees the stalker on the bus which drives away, and then she arrives at work and sees a colleague in the toilet. Is it possible for him to get there that fast? Probably not, but her colleague is still being very suspicious, especially since he legs it out of the door as if panicked. Did she disturb him whilst he was messing with the vent? He leaves, but then a tall man, the stalker, is standing in the coffee shop. Who knows? There's a case to be argued though that this entire shift could have just been part of the nightmare, seeing as the shift never technically ends and transitions straight into the nightmare, which she wakes up from. Another interesting thing though is that during the shift on the 17th of December, her colleague is nowhere to be seen. Now we do remember that a woman said that she saw someone on the roof during the shift. Is this her colleague? Has he not managed to get back to work on time? Like I said, this is likely just a wild swing, but it bears thinking about. And for the third and final theory, it could be that there are many stalkers, not just one. Look at it this way. This young woman encounters many, many creeps during her evening shifts, which makes sense given the warnings by customers that these incidents happen at night. And coupled with the fact that the private investigator said that these are a regular occurrence. The first one is the guy that just stands outside the window and then comes in and orders milk. Then there's the pushy guy who asks for her number. A colleague could be another one, leaving a note stating they met at Chillers, and maybe he's the one living in the back room. I mean, that could explain the screwdriver and his horrible attitude towards her. The tall guy who she gave the phone back to at the start and then turned up and tried to hurt her. Then there's the guy who was watching her from his car, and we see the same car just turn up in the parking lot, sit there and then drive off. Although I think this may be the stalker who tries to attack her at the end. And well, there's this guy, but he just seems to be a weirdo. Anyway, these are just theories, as these kind of games are quite open to interpretation and don't really give too much away, which, which I kind of like. But that's it for this video. If you did enjoy it, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel and leave a comment down below on your thoughts. But for now, take care and I will see you in the next one.